Hey guys, my name is Kayla. I am a graphic designer and pet portrait artist, and I am so bad at uploading. Here's my little disclaimer as always. I feel like I put this in every video. Um, I film and edit on my three-year-old phone, and I live in a small house with four other people, so that means not a lot of space to set out a studio and not a lot of privacy to talk to myself. Uh, also, my life is very, very busy. I'm going through some career shifts and things at the moment, and I hope to make YouTube a priority someday, but today's not that day. Long story short, be nice, I'm not a professional, and yeah, if you like this, let me know. Be that encouragement that it takes to make me log in and try. <laughs> Everybody needs that sometimes, right? Uh, yeah, brutal honesty time, I guess. I feel like that's the worst way to start out a video, is say why I'm not good at this. Awesome, A+. Plus. Anyway, for today's video, some of my Instagram friends have requested a digital art tutorial. One thing I get asked a lot is how I do my lines digitally, and how I give them so much character and variation and depth, uh, almost like a traditional piece, hint, hint. And I kind of laughed to myself because the short answer is, I'm lying and I don't do them digitally at all, usually. Nine times out of 10, unless I'm feeling fancy or I'm trying to go for a specific look, I usually draw my lines with good old pen and ink on regular paper, and then I scan them into Photoshop. Uh, from there, you're gonna wanna mess with the levels and filters a little bit to make it look like perfect black lines on top of perfect white paper. The reason for this is even if you have an awesome camera or an awesome scanner, you're still gonna probably get dark edges and weird gradients and pieces of dirt where you don't want them. Uh, that's just the nature of traditional art. Um, so you're going to want to edit those out a little bit, and from there, I set the layer mode to multiply. After that, I do the coloring underneath that layer, and what the multiply layer allows is that it lets the color show right through the paper. And honestly, I could end the video there. That's it. That's my lie. That's how I make traditional art look digital, and, you know, nobody ever has to know. Now, why do that? Why do I do this? Why do I hide it? Uh, I definitely feel like it's a little bit of an unusual approach, and I know a lot of people who, for some weird reason or another, take pride in doing things all digitally. They're like digital purists. They like think, I don't know, they, they take pride in doing the whole sketch and everything digitally, and they think they're better because of it. I don't, I don't know. Honestly, it's just personal preference. You know, I'm faster with ink, I'm more comfortable with ink, I've been drawing on paper for my whole life, and on the computer, comparatively not as long. I also just like the effect that it gives, how it's not completely perfect, there's a little bit of a fuzzy edge to it. Um, you know, and it makes it, makes it look like the artist's hand was there. I think there's really no one right way to do art unless you're like dealing with a picky client or something. So I don't see an issue with it. Another thing I get asked a lot, and I'm sure several people are thinking it, is why don't I erase my pencil lines? Don't I know it makes it look messy and unfinished and people don't like it as much that way? Well, I kind of have a story. Back in art school, I had this one drawing professor who liked the look of leaving old lines. He would tell us all the time on every critique, that would be better if you had just left your erased lines. He was weirdly poetic about it, actually, saying that it showed the transformation of the piece from beginning to end, and it showed evidence of mistakes, and that made it better. And it showed that the, again, that the artist's hand had been there. And at first, all of us students kind of reluctantly did it, even though it pained us horribly, because we wanted to make that professor happy and get the good grades and show that we were listening to him. And then, over time, it kind of stuck. I realized that, heck, um, 
yeah, I actually really like the texture that it brings. So, yes, when you see my nasty, grainy little pencil lines, it's actually a conscious choice that I keep them in. So finally, onto the subject matter itself. Maybe I should have done this first, I, I don't know. Uh, obviously, these characters are not my own. They are the Cat Bus and the Totoros from the Studio Ghibli film, My Neighbor Totoro. I saw it maybe once or twice, and yeah, I thought it was adorable, and I wanted to draw the characters, but I had since kind of forgotten about that. And my, re my uh, real reason for drawing them today is that people keep requesting it, requesting sticker design specifically. Um, I recently showed some stuff at an art show, and I met a guy who kept saying, you really need to draw a Totoro, because it would fit in well at your table. You've got your anime stuff, you've got your cats and cute animals, you really need a Totoro and a cat bus. So I said, okay, okay, you guys win, and it was, it was a really good idea. So, wink wink, nudge nudge, if you get over to my Instagram page, you'll be able to see these stickers once they're done, and if you want one, you can grab one, just very subtly to <laughs> me. Um, I'm also way more active over on my Instagram. I aim to post at least three times a week, sometimes more, depending what's going on. Um, yeah, we have fun over there, it's a good time. I do also have Facebook and DeviantArt pages, as well as a print shop, <laughs> and I'll link that all down below. I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope our paths cross again, and um, have an awesome night or day or whatever time it is. Goodbye!